Aloha. I wish to welcome the delegates and honored guests at the seventh regular session of the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission. I really regret that I cannot personally be with you today, but my duties as chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee require that I remain in Washington at this time. As many of you are aware, 10 years ago, delegates from 26 nations gathered in Hawaii and voted to adopt the Convention on the Conservation and Management of Highly Migratory Fish Stocks in the Western and Central Pacific Ocean. So I think it is appropriate that on the 10th anniversary of that historic moment, we gather once again in Hawaii to review past accomplishments and plans for the future, while keeping in mind the original intent of the convention. The, commission of the, uh, the work of the commission is very important, and I've closely monitored its activities over the years to assess whether the decisions made by the member nations have brought us closer to the goal of the convention, which is to ensure through effective management the long-term conservation and sustainable use of highly migratory fish stocks in the Western and Central Pacific Ocean. As you begin your deliberations, I respectfully urge the delegates to keep the following question in mind. Are the actions of the Commission putting us on a path to a sustainable, highly migratory fishery in this region, one that brings equitable economic and environmental success to all members? For years, the Hawaii Long Lines fleet has served as a model for meaningful efforts to conserve and manage fishery resources in the region. After all, if there are no fish, there'll be no fishermen. Our Hawaii fishery is the most comprehensively and cooperatively managed fishery in the region. The array of conservation and management measures under which this fishery operates includes restrictions on the number of permits allowed in the fishery, mandatory observer cover coverage on all vessels, detailed logbook requirements, dockside monitoring, vessel monitoring systems, area closures, and gear restrictions to ensure little to no bycatch. The requirements are strictly enforced, and the data gathered is critical to preparing reliable stock assessments. Just this year, the Hawaii fishery has been closed since November 22nd because scientists and experts knew with certainty the exact day that the fishery would meet its quota. Strong data, sound monitoring mechanism, and effective enforcement are the keys to success. The signatories to the convention should aspire to adopt the model set by the Hawaii Longline Fishery. Without the adoption of clear, equitable, and most importantly, enforceable conservation and management measures, the goal of the commission as a regional fishery management organization will not be met. Setting quotas for only a few signatories, coupled with the lack of strong reporting requirements and enforcement, is an ineffective approach if our goal remains the conservation and sustainable use of resources. Further, I encourage the Commission to act quickly and decisively to establish rules for charter and other fishing agreements in order to ensure transparency and to require that all parties play by the same rules. Just as all signatory countries must monitor their fisheries and effectively enforce conservation and management measures, the responsibilities for reducing catches to a sustainable level must be shared by all nations and all gear types in an equitable manner. Data over the years has shown that purse seiners catch nearly as much big eye tuna as bycatch as longliners catch as a targeted species. I'm disturbed by reports that by the end of 2010, the purse seine bycatch of big eye tuna is expected to exceed 
the targeted catch of big-eye tuna by longliners. Some measures have been taken to address this problem, but more must be done. As the Commission evaluates its conservation and management practices, it must endeavor to inject much needed transparency and equity into its efforts. The development of effective enforcement mechanism is critical and quotas are meaningless without them. All the signatory nations must commit to providing accurate, reliable data about catch efforts and all additional fishing arrangements to ensure the sustainable harvest of these vital resources. I appreciate this opportunity to share some of my thoughts on these important issues. After 10 years, the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission is at a crossroads and now has an opportunity to move forward in a meaningful way that allows for equity among nations and territories. I wish you great success in your deliberations. Aloha.